Hi friends, uh, this is a course on risk based engineering, uh, a relatively new paradigm. Uh, I'll introduce uh, what are the traditional approaches and uh, what is risk based engineering. Um, this course is part of uh, NPTEL, National Program on Technology Enhanced Learning. And uh, I am Professor Prabhakar V. Varde from Homi Bhava National Institute. And uh, of course, uh, I have worked in BRC for uh, more than 34, 35 years. And um, I have got my specialization in uh, nuclear plant operation and uh, safety. So let us get going with the course. Um, so uh, we see that uh, risk yeah, is an inherent part of uh, our life, uh, wherever you look around. And probably in our lifetime also, we are not exposed to uh, the risky situations because uh, uh, the defenses for us have been created. But then uh, the new modern world is uh, uh, now approaching towards development of complex engineering system and complex environment itself. So uh, this subject, uh, you look at any field, whether it is a forensic, uh, whether you look at engineering, whether you look at even science itself, um, there are kind of uh, situations you have to uh, manage the risk, uh, try to reduce the risk situations. And uh, so uh, for this lecture, this is the first lecture, and it will provide uh, you the background uh, on risk and risk-based engineering. So um, here we see that, that uh, as we see, whether it is a transport, uh, whether it is a um, chemical, uh, uh, chemical uh, factories or process uh, uh, factories, or even if you uh, take uh, like uh, state of the art in space science, um, Everywhere we are dealing with risk, not only in terms of uh, fatalities and all. If I, sometimes it is a financial risk, sometimes it is a risk of reputation, uh, sometimes it is a risk to the climate. Uh, so, uh, so, so, and, and every system has uh, have to have its own uh, tools and methods for reducing the risk to the acceptable level. Risk cannot be zero or it is very difficult to give an assurance that risk will be zero for any walk of the life. But yeah, it should be brought to the, take the case of our elevators. It, there was a time when in the taller buildings, the even now the old generation, they do not prefer, you know, going up and down in the elevators. And now modern generation, they don't, they accept, they have accepted it because they are aware that the risk to their uh, life or any uh, injury, or it is a uh, uh, small fraction and they can uh, use this thing. So it is a risk is sometimes it is a, uh, it is a question of perception also. Okay? And then we have this uh, uh, security situation, safety situation, safety and security. These are now being handled together because in the changed ecosystem, societal ecosystem, now even security aspects have to be addressed because uh, safety is good, it is uh, uh, inadvertent fault uh, due to human error, but if we take the human component, then security is because of deliberate uh, actions or uh, malefied uh, intentions. So this has taken a new dimension, I would say bigger dimension, and uh, this has to be handled. And uh, of course, uh, in this uh, uh, course, I will not be going into the details of uh, 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 security molding and all that. Uh, you require a separate uh, course on this, but wherever possible, I will touch upon this aspect. And then accidents and its impact. It can be, you would have seen um, that uh, in our uh, newspaper and all, we all hear about the accidents, uh, with the, whether it is a process industry, or you, you, you know, transport accident, train, uh, road accidents. So, um, yeah, so but the kind of impact it has is uh, really very serious. Why? Because 
uh, it is not only that uh, that uh, one person uh, from the family is gone it has got the impact on the whole family and it really requires uh, a very serious lo uh, lo look uh, and it, uh, further it Im impacts the financial model of the family uh, it impacts the well being of the family so uh, it has got much deeper uh, impact uh, than what we read in the new newspaper as a cursory so we tend to be curs cursory reading so uh, and for that, now uh, luckily we have one tool called probabilistic risk assessment. Uh, tra traditionally it is called probabilistic safety assessment, but in many countries uh, it is called probabilistic risk assessment. So probabilistic risk assessment, probabilistic safety assessment, both are same actually. Um, you, you have the initiating event, you have the safety provision, see the pl uh, plant response and estimate the probability of the accident. And then finally, uh, see how safe we are, whether it is uh, meeting the target and all. So uh, this is what, and now this probabilistic risk assessment, uh, there is a, a reasonable acceptability of this tool. Uh, and now it is being used as part of either risk-based engineering or risk-informed engineering. Because now in this uh, globalized uh, and competitive world, um, we require flexibility in operation also. So. Um, uh, so, uh, if we have a tool where it can provide uh, uh, the estimate of instantaneous risk, then we all know uh, ki, uh, whether the flexibility or uh, the liberty for us to take certain action or not. Uh, we will discuss in the, the detail this aspect and finally it is conclusion. Okay? So, uh, the, the traditional approaches were there uh, for uh, managing safety and risk. Uh, now, uh, of late, uh, probabilistic risk assessment has come. So, uh, now it is increasingly being used uh, not as a safety assessment or risk assessment model, but also it is used in developing the, uh, uh, the application areas. That means it has entered into applied domain to manage many of the situation. Uh, not only that, it has become part of the uh, regulatory uh, exercises where uh, risk informed approach is uh, used uh, in uh, support of decision making uh, when you hit a, a situation where uh, where uh, we require additional input so risk inform input is, uh, uh, becomes uh, very useful and uh, then it's a, again it is a uh, decision and then finally we come to a conclusion in the regulatory ecosystem also now uh, if you want to understand risk first we have to uh, see uh, what is a hazard because finally uh, by, uh, uh, the component of risk comes from the component of hazard. So this slide uh, uh, in a very elegant way uh, tries to explain um, what is hazard and how it has got a risk component and how risk can be, risk evaluation is one thing but uh, in real time scenario, even if you don't have scientific uh, tool, data, methods and all, um, since ages we have been managing uh, risk reduction. Uh, even if you go to the stone age, the kind of houses they will build, the kind of tool they will build for their, for their safety. So this was there. So now that means what we are saying is he against hazard and uh, risk reduction, we need to have a defense mechanisms. So uh, you can see in this slide. And the hazard is characterized by uh, a uh, lion in the um, uh, lion in the uh, cage. Okay, so uh, this is an epitome of hazard. Okay, and now uh, we have the three kind of and you see the public is around this cage. Uh, so cage itself becomes one defense. Then barrier around shown in the red it becomes a uh, 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 second line of defense. And th then so the first defense is. Uh, safety instruction because as soon as we approach or we operate in a certain uh, ecosystem where there is a potential uh, risk uh, uh, component is there. So there are safety instruction. They tell us what to do, what not to do. But that alone is not uh, sufficient. There has to be some barrier. So the cordoning uh, around the uh, cage is second level of defense. And the third level of defense is the cage itself. So. Uh, you can say we have three level of safety ba ba uh, barriers or uh, uh, management uh, provisions uh, in, in the system and then in spite of that if we 
meet with an accident then we have this uh, emergency measures you know so to mitigate or reduce the chances of um, fall so uh, since it is a hazard uh, is ep epitome or here then it is uh, uh, the public area where uh, and then surveillance plays a bigger role in fact surveillance can be one more level of uh, defense and uh, uh, so that is there and then the warning which are there uh, and these all together and of course the indication also makes uh, this one that there is a hazard okay and uh, everything is intact so green area in this zone and then if any situation is there where so uh, like you see the uh, traffic light uh, similar uh, indications are used uh, to uh, show the uh, level of safety that is there in any um, situation. So now uh, we are talking about risk. Uh, what is risk? Risk is nothing but likelihood of an event and associated consequences. So that means uh, let us say if the uh, risk of an accident is the likelihood or the frequency of an accident, how frequently it can happen, it could be our own, you know, boundaries we are trying to understand this concept. So, let us say in a one city, how many accidents are there and how many fatalities are there. So, if say two person died per month, so that means it is a statement of risk and mathematically it is given as risk. Uh, is equal to likelihood into consequences. Then if we take further down, uh, 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 we want to develop the model, it will be summation of likelihood into consequences because there are for various consequences, there will be likelihood for various uh, uh, situation, there will be likelihood and for uh, consequences also can have its own, uh, uh, its own definition or levels actually. So uh, these two to together and the may biggest uh, uh, point about this slide is risk is a mathematical parameter. Risk is a mathematical parameter. It has got mathematical connotation and that is why it is more useful because something if it is available uh, in mathematical term, so that means we have a quantified estimates and when we have a quantified estimates, we can say which is more, which is less and even the minor difference can make the uh, di uh, change in the setting or index of the, those. Uh, sequences so our levels of risk so this is the biggest example and not not only that you will see the quantification is the bottom line when we go for a risk based approach for uh, engineering system we are limited ourselves to engineering systems only and uh, then second uh, term we must understand in this uh, uh, in this uh, presentation itself there is a reliability because uh, for risk estimation lot of reliability mathematics has been used and reliability of the equipment or safety system that itself uh, becomes the cornerstone of risk management. So reliability is very important. Okay. So what is reliability? Reliability means if we have some item or uh, system, uh, it should provide the service in simple language. It should provide service to your satisfaction. Then you will say, Oh, this system is good. Oh, it's a quality system. So what comes is, if we have a quality equipment, its reliability will be better. And what is quality? Quality is conforming to the specification. We'll go into all those details. So quality, reliability, risk, safety, availability, they are all related term. So uh, let us focus on reliability in this slide. Um, so uh, probability that a component will survive for a given period of time or a stated period of time under stated conditions. Because if I test a component or let's uh, I test a car in a in a uh, factory environment uh, where everything is set, uh, you know, uh, loading, unloading, environmental uh, thing, uh, fuel quality, everything. So it will give a particular average. But suppose if we if we uh, uh, take it in the field, uh, uh, its condition will be different. That means reliability is a package which comes with the one is time to failure number one. And it comes with the condition under which condition we are mentioning that my reliability of my component is 0.999. It is a very subjective statement. Okay. Now, mathematically, how I express reliability? Uh, we know that reliability is a function of time, mission time, I would say. Okay. Um, uh, if I if I am uh, 
uh, running an aircraft my mission time will be for going to the next uh, thing or it could be two uh, loading sequences or two takeoff two or 10 takeoff and all all those things they form the part of the mission so it, it is a function of time and the other parameter is failure rate where it comes from it comes from the databases because uh, any uh, company or any product uh, when it is developed uh, in a, a domain or in the company itself the failure uh, when testing is performed its records are built so let us say uh, what is failure rate that means three failures in thousand hours so three into 10 to the power minus three is the failure rate it is very simple so every slide should take you inch forward in understanding the uh, concept so it is reliability so i got a failure rate here so lambda is the failure rate per hour okay that means three failure per uh, the, uh, 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 per thousand hours uh, okay or uh, 3 into 10 to the power minus 3 per hour exponential terms if you use um, and then um, we, uh, the reliability has got uh, simple model is exponential model so here we are uh, discussing uh, showing the exponential model here so rt is equal to exponential minus lambda t because we are assuming that the data is following exponential there are so many distributions but uh, this is the very simple and elegant uh, uh, distribution and uh, uh, if, you, if you go by the experience it is extensively used in reliability engineering okay there are other also viable normal distribution uh, the discrete distribution uh, continuous distribution i uh, will come to those things but let us focus first on this slide so mission time and failure rate and it will give you reliability don't you think it is easiest way and you got a reliability statement go to the database take the failure rate see that it is matching your component and then uh, see your mission how long you want it to run whether it is a your fan whether it is your tube light whether it is any any other component and you will say reliability of my tube light in my house is this thing because this is a reliable uh, this uh, uh, tube light is a uh, 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 is a component which is once fails you have to throw it it is non repairable system so for th this kind of thing reliability is, forms a very good terminology and how uh, at the start its reliability will be one and finally it will come and uh, if you don't do any intervention maintenance all those things it will touch down to the zero because any component which is uh, coming in existence it has to fail okay now uh, risk assessment and management let us have go to the little background you what are the methods that are available for risk assessment and management so traditionally deterministic approach and it has given a wonderful result in nuclear industry you know um, uh, we have almost like uh, 430 plus plants uh, operating world over and uh, we have three major accidents and those accidents have given uh, such a beautiful uh, learning that our accident rates have reduced and I think to, uh, as on today the nuclear industry is known for its highest uh, safety record that they maintain actually. So deterministic approach is done but then we, we know that there is always a uh, scope for improvement for any method to make it more holistic you know and to get benefit from the other sources also what and now we know that it is a competitive world. So uh, new new techniques are coming one is hazard and operability studies uh, which is more popular in chemical industry uh, again similarly preliminary hazard analysis it can be there for any uh, system that you are uh, carrying out so uh, one uh, PHA is the uh, thing which is required and then uh, qualitative methods uh, system periodic audits you know um, so uh, in olden time the um, uh, ensuring reliability was through audit inspection services in service inspection these were the methods actually and then probabilistic risk assessment so now if i to talk uh, give you a hint the risk based engineering the two component probabilistic risk assessment deterministic risk assessment they form the major uh, major building block of uh, risk based engineering and it is the maturity of probabilistic risk assessment that is it has given way to risk informed and risk based engineering risk informed uh, uh, engineering uh, uh, approach is very popular in uh, regulatory domain and that's how uh, our system safety especially in the nuclear domain it is it is being used uh, you know uh, in, in support of decision making and the uh, risk based approach uh, so risk based approach means your decision uh, decisions are based on um, uh, the input that are coming from uh, risk uh, component actually 
okay so now uh, let us see um, uh, we are also because i am giving you background of this whole subject actually it is very important to understand the complex safety critical system because uh, we are trying to develop this risk based engineering framework um, it could be futuristic it might be used somewhere or other, other in the present uh, ecosystem also but then uh, complex engineering system remains a uh, a an application area uh, for risk based engineering now what is complex engineering system complex engineering system if you uh, take this thing uh, we uh, when you go, come to a level that randomness is part of all our uh, all our endeavors what we do uh, you might say uh, i am developing uh, a uh, a shaft okay pump shaft and its diameter is 2.3 cm but if you have a precise precision instruments you will find that that diameter is varying from 2.3 to 2.03 2.295 so uh, the variation is a part because the process the material the uh, machine accuracy and all they introduce but only the difference is sometimes we can accept the randomness or variability which doesn't affect uh, in our application so we are happy with the uh, with the 2.3 diameter we are told and we use a bearing and all but then uh, there are some area we are entering into a complex system that means uh, the uh, the technology has evolved to an extent that you know um, the, now the uh, bearings are operating uh, at a speed of 36000 uh, rpm okay so even small uh, uh, variation there it can create big problems so uh, now randomness has so we of course uh, randomness also has got a two component that is uh, it's called uncertainty actually and it has got to epistemic aleatory aleatory part is randomness but then lot of things come from the epistemic part also which is called uh, you know more data model methods you know human and uh, you know so other uncertainties so we'll 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 discuss about that also in the uh, future because this is a uh, common platform that i'm trying to create background backdrop i'm trying to create i am using those terms also which will be coming in the our lecture later on now um, so first is interaction uh, interaction among uh, various parts when when they go beyond certain limits in terms of dynamics then system we call as a complex system okay then interaction among the machine part and uh, between machine and human that means human machine interface another level of uncertainty comes into the picture so uh, system becomes complex you know um, like uh, even if we talk about thermal modeling structural modeling and all material properties uh, variation uh, fabrication variation surface finish they all bring in a component of variability there so uh, so uh, so this is where uh, we require uh, a approach uh, which can capture the variability and which can uh, translate into uncertainty and then it can uh, say okay uh, instead of telling a point value of result it gives you upper bound lower bound that means it captures the uncertainty very well so that we are aware Uh, in real time uh, ki the minimum speed i can run this car this much maximum speed i can minimum speed no problem but even minimum speed ca causes erosion so so everywhere the if bounds are given then it's a usual and then in terms of capability also um, earlier we used to have 200 megawatt nuclear plants it is not not forgiving type so much of energy is built into the system so it is not uh, uh, it cannot tolerate mistakes so again they become complex engineering system so require a meticulous uh, uh, thing and then uh, examples of complex if i have to uh, if, uh, above description is not sufficient then um, nuclear system process system space system chemical system uh, transport system shipping system they are all example of complex engineering system uh, okay so we, we can is, this slide is for us to see uh, see what are the complex the first one is the Uh, uh nuclear uh, engineering system okay so yeah so it is a, um, uh, it is a nuclear plant actually you know um, first one uh, you can see the size uh, maybe whether you will be able to realize then even the bridges that are being built uh, i have taken this from internet and i have given the source here and uh, you can see here uh, the bridges uh, this bridge is Uh, in mumbai uh, 
uh, very recently built uh, and then this is our trains uh, systems you know so and then aviation uh, platform offshore platform shipping and of course space aviations so i for the uh, for the purpose of this i am considering the, these are the complex engineering system uh, risk management uh, philosophy so uh, any process system or system that we build uh, the systems uh, complete structure can be divided into two part process system and safety system process system required to uh, run the system to provide the intended service so they are called process system safety system if any deviation or any problem is there in the system safe safety system correct it and it brings the system to the safe state then whatever actions are required actions are taken and then um, uh, then uh, this uh, uh, system is again uh, started back so safety, safety system take care of as the name suggests of safety of the plant process system takes care of uh, throughput or the services that it is providing and uh, safety system remain standby if you have to take that difference uh, and the process system they keep uh, working continuously till the plant is, is in is in the uh, safe domain actually okay and then safety assurance is in perpetuity so and when the plant is running the again the safety assurance is there so in service inspection manning the plant uh, um, in intervening uh, if some, something has gone or uh, some pump has tripped so you have to start it back so that is something that plant has got capability without any uh, interruption or transient and we can uh, keep, keep doing certain changes to keep the plant operating and uh, uh, so um, even if if we take about this uh, uh, train so which have modern uh, the tool is uh, anti collision devices which are there so automatic safety action so now safety uh, is going for a more uh, towards automation side because there is a confidence that the safety system will not fail in unsafe manner and it will do the intended function so uh, so it doesn't take the system away from uh, the routine operations actually so uh, consequences of accident it could be fatality loss of property loss of reputation loss of life uh, then might to, uh, lead to uh, lead to um, loss of reputation uh, also uh, it can uh, it can impact the heavy losses uh, and you know sometimes the product go out of the service because uh, because product is not given either reliable service or it has led, led to the accident so this is uh, uh, so you can see the the epitome is uh, bhopal gas tragedy uh, around 3800 fatalities reported i mean and then uh, the whole uh, the whole system had gone out of uh, this thing market so i think union carbide so we have this and then uh, let us say uh, wow, wow, major because you know we are studying risk and so we should have a little insight onto the accident also uh, so these are the major accidents in india that uh, uh, we have uh, it, i have collected from very open literature this uh, thing uh, the bridge related accident caused 80 fatalities in 2022 uh, doesn't matter where it is and all so uh, then uh, canal uh, accidents then uh, residential building fire uh, actually fire especially in summer is becoming a, one of the biggest uh, you know uh, issues uh, himachal pradesh bus uh, bus accidents uh, and i think when i am reading out this you will not find that these are these are something new they are uh, they are recurring and it's happening still uh, so they require uh, special attention uh, you know uh, because to, uh, every life is important that is that is the bottom line and uh, accidents take away uh, uh, lot of lives actually boiler explosion then several it doesn't matter it is a name and then you can see the list and uh, uh, one of the accident 146 uh, fatalities were there uh, express train derailed in up okay so uh, then fire explosion again ex uh, an explosion 100 fatalities uh, so it is just the name and then if we uh, if we try to see the gist of this table the 14 fatal events have happened in 10 years and uh, uh, yeah so with with this if we say 10 years is the period 14 uh, uh, accidents 
Total number of fatalities uh, uh, 1022, that's what I am having here. Average fatality is 73 high. And fatalities, uh, maximum fatalities is 146 railway accident. Um, and then minimum fa uh, fatalities 36 tampered in uh, religious gathering. So this is, we try to understand what, what is happening around us, uh, you know, and what can be done. So this is just a starting point. Okay. And uh, uh, of course, one uh, one more uh, thing is there that is the railways. And uh, if accidents are happening, that doesn't mean that there is a uh, there is a uh, something to be uh, be critical about that. Um, I can talk about Indian railways. They are doing wonderful job. One of the our biggest network in the world the kind of uh, number of trains that are running, their kind of problems they are facing. But then accidents should not, we are, our domain is accident should not happen, we should try to reduce it. So uh, this is where it is forming a sort of revisiting the accidents in 1981, uh, Piranum 10 accident, uh, 30 lives were lost. And then uh, Firozabad uh, train accident 1995, um, 358 lives were lost. I mean, it is a cause for concern. And uh, 1995, Firozabad, yeah, so the, there are some uh, scenes that are uh, for us to see. Then uh, Khanna rail accident, in, uh, uh, which was there in 1998, 212 people died. And 1999, Gazelle in Assam, 290 lives are lost. 2016, uh, Kanpur rail accident, and the 150 lives. So uh, I think, uh, I think, um, so we are, this data is from 1981 to uh, 2016 and then few more I will show you in the next slide and I think uh, it's time to review Odisha accident uh, which happened and uh, 296 lives. So, so even to, uh, see 2023 has come and uh, uh, even though a lot of learning would have gone on but the fatalities are still we can see very high. This is because the network is becoming more and more complex. Number of trains have increased, um, but that doesn't take away the light from key what we can do and how we can avoid these kind of things. And for that, um, the safety conscious or risk conscious culture should hit all the levels of any company. Because you know the biggest paradox about, paradox about the accident is that we all have in mind it will not happen now, it will not happen to us, it will not happen in my place. But when you we are hit, and this is the biggest problem, if you are prepared, conscious, aware about what kind of thing can happen and what can be, what are the things are at stake probably it can be brought down and it is, a, it is required to develop a risk conscious culture uh, at all the levels for everyone to see. And the most recent one, it happened in Bengal on June 17, um, to, uh, around 8 or 9 o'clock, uh, one passenger train it, which, was, which was stationary was hit by a goods train and probably signaling error, human error. Uh, uh, you know, some detailed investigation is going on, uh, but uh, it can be uh, the something or there that uh, the previous station master where the good train was passing, uh, probably he felt that uh, red light can be bypassed and some, some transaction, to, but uh, the, it, it, is, it is pending detailed investigation. Uh, so let us not uh, conclude anything, but the, it remains a uh, reality that eight people died in this uh, accident. and. Uh, Fault uh, doesn't remain or responsibility doesn't rest only at highest level. It do, goes down to the grassroots level. At and at any level, little bit of uh, laxity or you know. So we we can say uh, we are um, getting into an unsafe domain. Now, uh, just in this uh, slide, I'll try to uh, explain what is risk-based engineering. The gist is when uh, the traditional approaches are like. Um, defense in depth approach um, or you know uh, when they join with the uh, the, the relatively uh, new uh, probabilistic approaches um, and then we have a quantified estimates uh, to provide the statement of risk okay 
and then modern tools like use of prognostics and health management and uh, that means uh, a way to assess the remaining useful life of the component uh, the human error prediction uh, because uh, we know that 95% uh, so, no, so, no, sorry uh, more than 75 uh, 70% accident the human er error has been the contributing uh, factor okay uh, now there should be analysis beyond the human error also uh, whether it is really a human error or it is something else okay but even if you say it is a design error there also human was involved so human error has to be naturally more because whether it is a uh, whether it is a um, design, conceptual design design operation maintenance management regulation everywhere it is a human action so it has to be more but why it is happening at institutional level what are the tools to be built and all so that can be uh, th uh, thought about and risk based engineering uh, is a relatively new paradigm so uh, it is shifting the focus from risk informed to uh, risk based but not rigid in the sense we have the traditional approaches flexibility will be built in into the system how far uncertainty they, they so it will be flexible but at, le at least ensuring the lowest level of risk why because scientific tools have been developed mathematical tools are now available uh, um, the, the method of methodology is becoming more sort of living type or online monitoring sort of system like PHM and all that so uh, we can expect a better performance with this approach and then why we need a risk based approach of course uh, risk of accident has to be lowered uh, essence of all engineering endeavor is to uh, go to the highest level of safety it is a perpetually continuous effort that safety um, sa uh, uh, safety is an overriding factor and at the same time now we have deliverables also so we should have a tight rope walk uh, uh, and uh, though sometimes we consider safety and uh, reliability they are contradictory they are not contradictory um, uh, in the stricter sense because when you improve the reliability you improve reliability of safety system also so um, so and then whatever uh, whatever penalties are there for increasing the uh, safety now how much it eats away into the reliability that is a big question actually it has to be seen uh, if we take the um, a, a pragmatic view on this and probabilistic, probabilistic risk assessment now there is a acceptance or it is considered to be a matured approach so why not take advantage PRA is at the core of risk based engineering uh, along with uncertainty PHM human factor uh, and all these things uh, um, the, 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 when we come to the functional level or at the decision level the safety was a qualitative term actually you know uh, it has got a to do with the uh, more of what will happen to public or you know uh, the definition if we see but then we want a language which uh, makes us or which enables us to make our system more uh, more uh, safe or uh, de-risking should be a uh, uh, phenomena in per perpetuity so for that we need only risk as a driver for us uh, and it provides a very ele elegant mechanism for developing real time tool uncertainty characterization so it is required and it is applicable right from design operation maintenance regulation everywhere all the way so that's why it is so uh, in this lecture we have i think uh, i understand we have given the background uh, which will help us to track even future lectures this is a 12 uh, module uh, course and uh, first module is introduction in fact uh, further uh, four lecture also will go into introduction and then introductory concept on risk and reliability i have just introduced it we'll see the details later on accident scenarios what we mean what is at stake when accident happen and what is the uh, mindset um, which uh, which tends to uh, cause uh, the accidents uh, introduction to risk based engineering uh, this lecture set the ball rolling for motion for risk engineering course of course and uh, uh, next further discussion on the risk based engineering framework and related aspect in this module itself so this is first lecture uh, other four lectures are uh, will bring the uh, introduction uh, through this introduction um, uh, uh, us to the real track on risk based engineering thank you very much